we've already passed the carrying capacity of one planet. We have only a limited number of resources and a limited amount of space on this world. We need the resources of other planets to be able to live well. I really think the humanity in the future will be around the solar system. We will be living in multiple communities, on multiple surfaces, in free space, um, becoming different species as we evolve to the environment we live in. You can see a future where entrepreneurial companies are going out and doing things that nobody's ever done before. There, we've got people diving from space, we've got uh, private space stations, we've got, uh, we've got NASA going out to new worlds, uh, moon, Mars, beyond, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, stuff that nobody's ever thought before uh, was possible. So I worry about the survival of mankind. And um, so I think we've got to be planning and thinking forward. I don't want to live in the last days of a declining once great society. I want to live in the first days of the next great human adventure. It's not a world of finite shrinking resources and finite shrinking horizons and everybody dominated by squabbling over the scraps left to us by our ancestors. It has to be a world where we believe in the possibility that we can go out and do something new, where there is more out there if we just put the hard work in to get it. That's what a frontier is about, and space is a frontier that can occupy humanity for thousands of years to come. And I am very excited that we are at the threshold where we can choose to make that happen this country was built on innovation. Entrepreneurs came and made things happen. You know, they took action because they wanted to make different lives for, for themselves. And that's what America's built on. You look at big companies, Ford Motor Company, Boeing. You know, they, these were formed by individuals who had an idea and a vision and they implemented it. And they also worked within new markets or created new markets. So the commercial role uh, and the role of private sector and of small businesses really is the engine of America. So we need that investment to show that that is important. The government plays a role as well, but the, the, the real role of government is to fund the things that are too expensive, too high risk, too high return. The places where industry is afraid to invest or can't afford to invest. It's very sad to me that, that so many uh, free marketeers and believers in limited government have um, objected to, the, to what the administration's doing out of blind partisanship or, or because they think that um, the administration is wrong in other areas, they must be wrong in this one. And, and from my perspective, this is the one area in which they're the most right. Um, and by that I mean that, that they are committing NASA to buying commercial services. And there's really nothing better that government could do than to become a good and reliable customer. So I think it's very sad if we, if we continue to focus on space as a program, meaning NASA, and really not even NASA, but the old ways that NASA's been doing things, instead of thinking about space as a, as a place that's so full of potential. NASA needs to be thinking forward, you know, very far forward. These are the things that the public would pay for, but maybe the free market wouldn't pay for. These are the taxpayers going to do science with their, with their taxes, and that's okay. We, we'll do that. We, we want to go to Mars. We'll want to see what's on Mars. We'd love to see an astronaut pick those rocks up and tell us what they're looking at. I mean, those are the kind of things that inspire us. Those are the things NASA should be doing. We should support the president's new program uh, for space because it frees NASA up to do what NASA was supposed to do at its core, uh, which is do things that are too risky for the commercial sector to do. And uh, the commercial sector can actually support that. Um, and everybody can work together and do things together that they can't do by themselves. President Obama's vision for what to do with NASA and, and the, even the entire federal space initiative by the other policy they came out with is the first time that someone's actually proposed something that listens to the experts, includes the commercial component, but actually sets a goal that is beyond Earth orbit that is achievable. The goal is to be able to go anywhere and stay. That means you have a sustainable program as opposed to something that we have right now where 
you end up having a very large project, cannot fit within its budget, it fails, you re-examine and you come up with the next big pork project to be able to keep jobs in place. If your goal is to explore space, this proposal from the president is probably the best one that has ever come out. Um, because it's multi-destinational, it's, it's fiscally responsible, and it's sustainable, and it embraces the best that America has to offer, which is our entrepreneurial spirit. I think that the, the president's new policy on space, uh, even if it was not clearly explained at first, is very important because we have been stuck in a mindset for 30 or 40 years that government is the only way to go to space. And I think that has caused us untold amounts of uh, delay in economic development. You sort of have to try different things and make mistakes in order to learn and get a, a working system in whatever field of life <clears throat> by allowing lots of companies to go out with a business idea and try to develop something, you will get that experimentation that's needed to find the one that works. Um, the way NASA's been doing stuff for the last 30 years is they start building one system and then it gets too expensive and they cancel it. And they do this a few times and maybe build a system, but it's sort of a very sequential process instead of a parallel process. So it's inefficient and it slows down the point at which people could be employed by private industry and allow NASA to focus on the things that are too far out and too expensive for business to be interested in. But if, if businesses can provide those services and provide them to not just NASA, but to private individuals, why should they not be allowed to uh, do that without competing against uh, you know, federal dollars? There's been a history of government providing some kind of limited support at the beginnings of any new form of, of commercial transportation system, all the way back from when we built the first roads and canals in this country, up through the railroads and into the early days of aviation. Giving those industries a kickstart and then letting them grow and develop is something we've traditionally done in this country. Um, so I like the proposals in the, in the new budget and I hope they act on them and let's get, let's get that while we can because we may not get another chance. As Robert Heinlein used to say, yield to temptation, it may never come your way again. <laughs>